Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Probably the most common question that I get asked when I explain to people that I'm a sprint boat racer and I show them a video of it, the number one question I get asked is how do those boats stick to the water like that? Or how do they turn so hard? And it's honestly a really good question and it's actually a fairly complex uh, answer I would say that there's probably at least three parts maybe four parts yeah we'll go with four parts to what makes these boats turn so hard and I've got my 400 boat the 146 this is the new one sitting in my garage right now it's upside down the bottom is completely cleaned off and I'm ready to put my secret sauce coating on it so I'm going to take a minute and show you how these boats stick to the water okay first and foremost the dead rise this is a very uh, sharp dead rise. I think I alluded to in the other video. They're typically anywhere from 20 to maybe 24 degree dead rise. And all that is, is this angle right here is 24 degrees or 20 degrees, whatever it is. Um, that, so that's step number one to getting these boats stuck to the water. Okay, so let's say you have a car and you or a truck and you have these big fat tires on it but no tread so the big the big uh, deep um, dead rise is our tire but where's the tread so that is the second part of it and that is all of these they're called lifting strakes actually so there are four one two three four sets of full length lifting strakes and another half one up on the bow. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about what these lifting strakes do. They essentially, you create a little bit of a, of a flat spot on the bottom to get lift to get your boat up and out of the water. And why, why do you wanna get up and out of the water? Well, I'm gonna tell you that here in a second. So if this is a, let's just say this is a 20 degree um, dead rise down angle, this is a 20 degree angle here to make this perfectly flat, if not maybe even curved a degree or two that way. So that's all kind of preference on how people do it. So four full length strakes and then another strake up on the bow or along the keel. And that is to prevent the you from getting keel steering, if you will, and keep the, the this section of the boat from kind of digging in too hard. It keeps that lifted up and uh, the best that it can. So that's um, number two on how these boats turn so good. So those are the tread of the tire. So there's another thing, and that is a, an aggressive uh, negative or reverse chine. So back to the back of the boat, this is a 20 degree down. This is your reverse chine. Now this edge right here is kind of acts like a hockey skate in that when you're going around a corner, this edge really digs in hard. And you can see that this thing actually has a little bit of an upturn to it. So if this is 20 degrees down, this might be 20 to 24 degrees back up. So there is a little bit of a negative um, angle and this helps grab on the inside of a corner when you're going around the track. Now, so there's three things. The last thing and probably the most critical and what makes these boats so amazing in my opinion, is think about this think about if you take a vacuum cleaner okay i'm gonna walk over here really quick and you take a shop vac you take this thing right here and you go in the water what's going to happen for one it's going to lift the water up but it's also going to pull that vacuum the hose down right so uh what's the saying for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction so when you're sucking water up you're also sucking the hose down into the water enter a giant vacuum cleaner <laughs> this is a big hole in the bottom of your boat with a lot of horsepower attached to it so like i said this is an eight and a half inch pump you got an eight and a half inch fire hose sucking water and it's actually going up. So what that does is it pulls the bottom of the boat down into the water. And that's what allows you to make such hard turns. So that's um, number one is that suction right there caused by that that keeps the boat planted. Now, if you just, just happen to clip, a, clip the beach and you break that suction, game over. <laughs> that's why my, my triple roll at Port Angeles 
that's what happened. I just clipped that bank just enough to break that suction and you're done. You're you're not in control anymore. You, lo you lost that suction. The boat isn't planted anymore and you're along for the ride. So the other part of the pump, the other end of it, the business end is the steering nozzle. Can't really show you too, too good in here, but you got this big old fire hose right here and that is shooting out that water side to side with the suction, with the strakes, with the reverse chine, and with a 20 degree dead rise bottom, that is how these boats stick to the water. And that is how we are capable of sustaining four G corners around on just a ordinary, uh, ordinary track and peaking at over six and a half to seven Gs. Those are the reasons that these boats stick to the water. So here it is one more time. Secrets out, how do you build a sprint boat, steep dead rise, four and a half lifting strakes, reverse chine, and a big old suction in the bottom. One other thing I'm talking about, um, this is a, I am not getting paid or any kind of promotion with this, but um, just like aluminum or gel coat, you get kind of a, almost kind of a, um, an induced drag, or if you will, a parasitic drag from that, from that surface. And People always talk about like the golf ball going through the air. They started going further and further because of the dimples in the golf ball. Well, a lot of people use graphite paint, but here is my secret sauce that I use. It is called Whole Speed. I use the F-Series and it's a two-part epoxy bottom paint that's got a, a kind of a, a weird texture to it. And it is extremely slippery. Like when I put that stuff on, I'll be able to push this boat on the bottom of the floor. It'll slide right off of your trailer if you're not careful. You better have your safety chains on when you're backing down a boat ramp and all those things. The only issue with this stuff, the whole speed is it's only good in fresh water. It does not, what's the word? I can't remember when it's uh, essentially in salt water, it doesn't work, it'll break down. So these, that whole speed was, uh, it went after the bass boat fishing world because uh, those boats are pretty high speed, high performance boats. So that's what I use on the bottom of my boat. Everybody uses something different, graphite paint, whole speed, whatever, whatever it is. But so this is where I'm at today, getting ready to put that on. I thought I'd take the opportunity to show a, a naked sprint boat bottom. No secrets here in the Jelly Roger shop. But like I said, I didn't tell you all my secrets. I didn't tell you if I have a 20 or 22, 24 degree dead rise and those kinds of things. But that's the basics of a sprint boat bottom. One other thing, little skid fins. These, this is one inch doll, just a, a tiny one inch skid fin in the middle of the boat. And then you also put two back here and there isn't, that's not much of a, a fin at all. It's not a big skeg uh, by any stretch, but that essentially um, kind of changing the size, changing the location, moving that fore or aft, um, it really affects how twitchy your boat is and how it digs. So if you want your boat to slide, you shave that fin down just a little bit. If you don't want, if you don't want it to slide, you maybe make it a little bit bigger so it actually bites and digs uh, for you. So that's all kind of getting used to the boat, getting used to the setup. But otherwise, that's how a sprint boat turns so hard. Thanks for watching.